Hi, it's Chicken Bone John here. I'm just going to talk a little bit about putting frets into a guitar neck, whether it's a regular guitar neck, six string, or a cigar box guitar neck. It's all pretty much the same thing. I want to talk in particular about using one of these, which is a fret rocker. Um, it's very handy for when you're installing your frets to get them in accurately. Of course, when you've got your frets in like this, you can take a conventional straight edge and sight over the frets. But what's difficult to do with that is to identify if you've got any frets in particular which are high. And I'm going to show you how I put the frets in and how we check it. Uh, we'll be using a few basic simple tools. The fret rocker, a soft faced uh, hammer, a pair of decent end cutters and then to take off the ends of your uh, frets, a file, uh, we can also round the ends of the fret off, uh, frets off with one of these which is a, a file with a safe edge or with one of these a concave fret file. A lot of people don't look like these, it's what I've got used to. Okie doke, let's get on with the task. Okay, here I've got my uh, guitar neck on uh, my, my work table. I'm actually using the cast iron bed of my table saw. Uh, it may not be entirely appropriate, but people think I ought to be doing something on a special bench. But this is nice and solid, uh, and I've got a true flat surface. The first thing I've done, this neck, I've checked with a steel straight edge to make sure it's true and I've got a tiny, tiny bit of relief, so it's fractionally low in the middle, only a fraction of a millimetre. Um, that's been sanded off on the belt sander, I think with a 120 grit, and I'm just going to take a simple block and some 240 grade sandpaper, and I'm going to just finish sanding that off, which I've done already. I'm just going to take any Just set any loose bits and pieces off the corners. I'm not really rounding that off. Once I'm happy that all my inlays are all nice and flat, use your fingers. You can feel whether you've got those inlays in flat. And then I'm just going to finish that off with these micro mesh pads, which help me get a nice smooth finish on there. I'm not going to be doing anything with that fretboard other than putting a little bit of lemon oil on it. So I take that down and you can go smoother and smoother with these micro mesh pads. They're great for finishing of the paint finishes. Doing this fairly quickly but I've got that reasonably okay. Now to do this as well as being on a sort of firm table or bench to do this fretting I'm just going to lightly clamp this down so this isn't going to move about when I'm putting the frets in. Okay, and we don't want it under any undue sort of pressure. I'll clamp it in here, and I'm just going to put a few frets in on the end here. Okie doke. Right, with my neck clamped onto here, I'm going to put this fret wire in. This is uh, Van Ghent. Uh, jumbo is off the reel and it's still bent. I've straightened it a wee bit but I like using it with a bend in it <coughs> excuse me because it tends to keep the ends down. I'm just going to put a piece of fret wire across it. I keep it on the roll so I can support it with this hand and then I'm just going to lightly tap across the width of the fretboard and nip that off. Do that again. Same process. I tend to get the ends down first. Nice and firm. Nip that off. And another one. It's quick and easy.
Okay, here where I've got this overhang, I'm going to piece of, put it, put this piece of timber in there. Just lay my fret wire on. Same process. Tap that in, and then hold that to make sure it's it's supporting the end of that cantilever fret wire, so it doesn't cause any damage. And I'm going to nip that off. Then I'm going to go down the whole fretboard exactly the same. Just start the ends. Not too hard. Okay, here we have our neck, which has got all its frets in. Here's a six string neck. This was just a factory bought neck. But don't assume that the fretting is always perfect. Check before you actually do your final build and setup. Now, what I'm going to do, and I haven't, other than tapping the frets in, I really haven't done anything with this. And I'm going to take my fret rocker, which is a simple piece of um, stainless steel. It's laser cut, so it's very accurately. And I have these made in the UK by a local firm here in the West Midlands. Uh, they, uh, <laughs> they used to do all sorts of things and they still do. When I went around the factory there was uh, stampings with uh, Bentley on them and they also did parts for the original Mini. Okay, so what we're going to do, we can put it across three frets and I can just hear and feel this fret is a little high. And what we do is we check in in the middle and at the edges. Now we could dress that fret down, but what we may be able to do is just to give it a firm tap. A firm tap. There we go. Then we move up the fretboard, doing exactly the same thing. I check it at the edges. We go all the way up, just feeling if it will rock. And you can also actually sight underneath to see if there's a low fret. I can feel there's a ever so slight one there. Now this doesn't remove the need to actually level the frets and reprofile them, which you may need to do. But the great thing about this is you can get this pretty well accurate. Now the length of this, as you can obviously as you go up the fretboard, the gaps get nearer together, so we use a different face like this. That's okay. And I'm going to move up, check each one. So we can move progressively up the fretboard as they get closer and closer. And I'm checking across the width of the fretboard all the time to establish whether we've got a, a low fret or high fret, I should say. And I can just feel ever so slightly. Because of the accuracy of this, you can really feel the slightest the slightest rock and you can actually hear it and then we can work our way right the way to the top of the fretboard I mean this is a 24 fret and we can see we can the spacing it's fine I've got a slightly high one here and I'm just going to tap that I mean, fretting hammer small enough on the head so I can selectively get one of those frets. So as I say, we double check all the way up and down the fretboard with that. And that's a really nice, quick, easy and accurate way of determining if you've got high and low frets. Uh, you will know if you've made a fret of the guitar, it can be one of the worst things, getting rid of buzzers. So, and it's usually caused by either a fret being too low or too high and the string will buzz on it and they can really be difficult to get rid of people tinker around with the action at the nut and the bridge but to get the best action you need to check your neck straight in the first place with a tiny bit of relief and then hammer the frets in accurately check it with a full straight edge check it with a fret rocker we can do exactly the same thing with 
a regular guitar and as I say I would always check across the width of the fretboard you never know if there's been a loose fret end uh, especially on you know a fairly basic uh, factory produced neck I can feel there I've got a tiny bit of a little bit high so what I may try doing is doing this onto this cast iron working area so it's not going to move okie doke so that's it that's the uh, stainless steel made in the UK uh, fret rocker as I say laser cut stainless steel very cheap it's less than a fiver I think in our shop so for around about a fiver you get a tool that's going to do uh, be allowed to check all your guitars and that will last for ages Okie doke, bye for now.